Dr. Hector says, hey, like many, I bought COVID price guitars while trying to find my niche. Now that I know what I'm looking for, I'm left with guitars that I have dropped in value. Should I sell at a loss or just add? Um, so the just add part, oh, let me hold it off. So I think a lot of players like this, we all have seen the, the, the prices have dramatically lowered. Um, of course, not lo they're not lower for the most part than they were in 2019. Prices are still up over 2019. We're talking about used gear, right? Used gear prices are definitely up at, as uh, from 2019 prices, but they have come down dramatically. I'd say 20, 30%. It seems to be a good rate. Um, and I'm shooting from the hip on that one, but just, you know, looking at used gear, that seems to be what it's come down for uh, so far. And um, what I would tell you is, is exactly, like, I can only give you the, the, the advice I'm following myself. I have a guest room, it's got a closet, and it's full of gear right now that of guitars that uh, I'm not going to sell right now. Now, if I needed to sell them, I would sell them not for the lower prices right now, but I would put the price I want for it, even if that's a little bit over market, and I would, I would wait it out. You know, you might find the right person over time, as long as you're being realistic, right? You're not going to get that premium price. That's not, that's just insane. But you could get, you know, whatever the spectrum of pricing is. Let's say a guitar is worth somewhere between 450 and 550. You might get to five, you know what I mean? So you can get in the middle or in the upper part of that middle. Or if the guitar has been selling on the high end right now, maybe you could get the high end. Um, but if you don't have to sell your gear, I wouldn't. Um, this is not the time unless you just want to cash out. Now, keep in mind, like I said, I hate talking about gear like the stock market because um, then what happens in a year from now is worth even less than it is today. You have to take that chance. I, I'm I'm taking the chance that I like it. I just don't need it right now. So I was thinking about off putting, it, offloading some gear, but you know, it's not worth the hassle right now. Plus, I just find that the main place I like to sell is Reverb and Reverb is just getting worse. <laughs> It's just getting worse. I mean, the scams are getting worse. The sellers are getting worse. The buyers are getting worse. It's just all getting worse. Uh, it's really interesting um, how bad it's getting. It's just getting really not great. Um, and I, I have to say, I feel like it's more on the, the buying than the selling. I've had more bu bad experiences buying something on Reverb in, in the last 12 months than I have had selling. So... So it's not that bad, but I just, I'm just not really loving it. I'm just not loving the experience. So I, with that, basically where I'm telling you that is because with that, all, that experience and the market, I'm not in the mood to offload some gear if I don't have to. Um, so there you go. So there you, unless anyone wants to DM me, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Direct message me uh, and go, Hey, what do you have? And what do you want? I mean, I'd sell it that way, but no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really care to um to do it right now so in that case like i said uh hector i wouldn't i wouldn't sell your gear if you don't have to that's basically what uh what my suggestion is this one's from matt who says hey phil i got a chance to buy a friend's 1980 gibson however it has a headstock repair looks good though okay and the truss rod is maxed out good condition besides that is there something I should be steer clear of? Well, first, obviously, as we all know, a headstock repair devalues the guitar immensely. So just be aware of that, even vintage guitars. Now, there are some great things about broken headstock or vintage style Gibsons. We're going to call it a 1980s vintage style Gibson, um, is that it does devalue them. And so you get, the, you get the, the product you want, the guitar you want, but you don't have to pay the premium on the price, right? And if you're going to play the damn thing, who cares? If it's been, like you said, it's been repaired really well, a lot of times you can repair headstock and it's never going to break again. That is the case in a lot, a lot of cases. Um, however, like we always say, it depends on who does the headstock repair. How um, you know well known are they? It's not how good are they. <laughs> That's I mean, it's important that they be very good. But to get value, you need somebody with a name. You need a, a famous luthier or somebody or a builder. A lot of times, a lot of guitar builders do luthier work as luthier work on the side, and that times that helps you. You're like, hey, so and so from blah 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 guitars did my you know headstock repair, and then people are like, oh okay, they feel pretty confident because a lot of people get a little squeamish about a headstock repair, even if it looks great, because they don't know. You know, it's kind of like you don't know what's under the hood. You don't know what's in there, and uh, so that's one. The second thing is obviously if you're saying the truss rods maxed out, that's another concern because again, once the truss rods maxed out, especially on a Gibson where that way that nut works, 
you know, you, cr you crank that thing down. There's no, there's a, there's a plate underneath that, that, that nut. Um, but there's nowhere for that thing to go. <laughs> so, so basically what I'm saying is you're, you're there, right? It's, that's the concern. You're, there's nowhere to go. So if the neck was to pitch forward, um, or get more relief, that's probably a better way to put it. If the neck was get more relief and the action starts going up, you have no way to tighten the neck. So that's your concern. So does that mean you shouldn't buy it? I, I can't tell you that. What I can tell you is, is that that's the information. Now factor that into your pricing and your logic and your decision. If you still pro feel pretty confident with it, then there you go. It's, um, but those are your concerns. The good news is though, is that it is possible for a Gibson with a headstock repair and max out truss rod to play well for many, many, many years and never have a problem. But again, one of those things doesn't make me as nervous as both of those things. Does that make sense? I'm like, duh. As soon as you said the second thing, I'm like, oh, okay, that's two things. Uh, that you definitely want to factor in. If you enjoyed this podcast clip, you can watch the entire episode by clicking the link in the description or streaming it on iTunes, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. You can also join it live every week, Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I hope to see you there. Until next time, know your gear.